Considering that water covers approximately 70% of the Earth's surface, I found a surprising number of individual small islands or island groups that are prominent on the grid lines emanating off of the North American star tetrahedron. My name is Michelle Gibson. I found them connecting cities and places across the Earth that are in alignment with each other over long distances, and I had never heard of most of them. I will share islands I discovered on the Earth's grid lines in this video. A grid line on the star tetrahedron emanating from Merida, Mexico, which is the location of the Mayan archaeological site of Chichen Itza, passes through islands such as Grand Cayman Island, claimed by the United Kingdom and an offshore banking haven, Kingston, the capital of Jamaica, Grenada, which was invaded by the United States in 1984, Fernando de Noronha, which is claimed by Brazil, and an island group of 21 islands, with only one of the islands being inhabited. Ascension Island, a speck in the Atlantic Ocean over which the alignment directly passes, and the only land between Fernando de Noronha and Sesfontaine, Namibia. What is interesting about Ascension Island besides the name? Well, for one thing, it is a British colonial outpost. There is a U.S. military airbase, satellite and submarine tracking stations, a BBC transmitter, and a listening post run by GCHQ's Composite Signals Organization. Moving on to the Pacific Ocean side, on the other side of the alignment through Africa, the alignment passes over the southern tip of Madagascar at Cape St. Marie. There has been a reemergence of Judaism in Madagascar in recent years, which they say was the original faith of the island. Catholicism arrived in 1841. The island was colonized by the French in 1896, and it regained independence in 1960. From there, the alignment proceeds to cross over the French sub-Antarctic islands of St. Paul and Amsterdam, and they are among the most isolated places on Earth. St. Paul was claimed by France in 1843, and the only human presence on the island is temporary, as there is a scientific research cabin located there. Amsterdam Island is a distance of 53 miles, or 85 kilometers, from St. Paul. It also has a seasonal scientific presence. Moving along the alignment, you come to Macquarie Island, upon which the Australian government has a base for the Australian Antarctic Division, which includes 20 to 40 scientists and a weather station and heliport. Macquarie is also designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site as the only place in the Pacific Ocean where rocks from the mantle are actively exposed at sea level. Let's see what that looks like. Well, what do you think? Actively exposed rocks from the Earth's mantle exposed at sea level or pyramids? This is how they hide it. Before the Internet, who would even know? From there, this particular alignment goes through Borobudur, the world's largest Buddhist temple in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. Then it goes through Davao in the Philippines until it comes to the northern Marianas and the Mariana Islands of Asuncion, Pagan, Tinian, Saipan, and Guam. The northern Marianas are a self-governing commonwealth in association with the United States and Guam, and the Marianas are a territory of the United States. This whole area was part of the Southwest and South Pacific Theater during World War II. Theater is an interesting word choice for an area or place in which important military events occur or are progressing. A theater can include the entirety of the airspace, land, and sea area that is or may potentially become involved in war operations, as well as theater being the word for a building or outdoor area in which plays and other dramatic performances are given. This is a photo of Midway Island, site of a major World War II battle, and the United States government still has a claim there as well. Midway is an unorganized, unincorporated territory of the United States and continues to be the only island in the Hawaiian island chain that is not part of the state of Hawaii. Next, I would like to share islands and other places I found on alignments connected with Cape Farewell at the southern tip of Greenland. Cape Farewell sits on an alignment that globally connects with two sides of the North American star tetrahedron. Cape Farewell is connected with the global alignment that emanates off of the Edmonton, Alberta, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Winnipeg, Manitoba, 
Thunder Bay, Sault Ste. Marie, and Ottawa, Ontario, side of the Star Tetrahedron. On the other side of Cape Farewell, this same alignment goes through the side of the tetrahedron that goes through James Bay, Hudson Bay, Red Lake, Ontario, Lake of the Woods, which straddles Ontario and Minnesota, Minot, North Dakota, Miles City, Montana, and Billings, Montana, Yellowstone Park, Wyoming, and Pocatello, Idaho, and on down through Elko, Nevada, Reno, Nevada, and in California, the Sierra Nevada Mountains, and San Francisco, California, and so on as it leaves North America and starts going over the Pacific Island groups. Going in an easterly direction, the Faroe Islands are the first place the alignment comes to when it leaves Cape Farewell. The Faroe Islands are located north of Scotland between the Shetland Islands and Iceland. They belong to an administrative division of Denmark and are home to approximately 50,000 people. If you look up the history of these islands, it is quite vague, with references to St. Brendan, a seafaring monk in the 6th century who described an island of sheep and a paradise of birds. Let's take a look at them. And Pharaoh, spelled F-A-E-R-O-E, -E, sounds phonetically like the word Pharaoh, or the title given to the rulers of ancient Egypt. From the Pharaohs, this alignment passes through points starting in Trondheim, Norway, going through Sweden, Finland, Russia, and Siberia, before it crosses over the Bering Sea and enters into North America at Nome, Alaska, and then heads down through Alaska and eventually through all the capital cities of the Canadian provinces, which are just north of the United States border. So moving on down this alignment, the next island is Isle Royale, which is located in Lake Superior, and this alignment is directly on the North American Star Tetrahedron. Isle Royale is known for its copper mines. As a matter of fact, the copper from Isle Royale was being mined extensively during the Bronze Age, around 3000 BC, and was considered the purest copper in the world and nobody can really explain who was responsible for the mining and how it got to Europe. The best they can come up with is also how they explain the people who built the mounds. Western archaeologists tell us that somehow Indians in loincloths figured out how to mine copper 5,000 years ago, and that somehow, we really don't know how, it got to Bronze Age Europe. And you will see the same story at every acknowledged mound site in North America. These complex archaeoastronomical mounds were built by Indians in loincloths, one basketful of dirt at a time. Moving along, the next islands on the alignment are the Canary Islands. While the Canary Islands are an autonomous community of Spain, they are actually physically located within a thousand miles of the coast of Morocco. I have read from many different sources that there was a major connection between the Canary Islands and Atlantis, things like they are parts of Atlantis that remained above water. Whatever the case may be, there are some really interesting things on the Canaries. This includes the Guimar Pyramids, which are on the alignment and are comprised of six rectangular terrace structures built from lava stone without the use of mortar. And this is a good spot to put in a comparison photo of the pyramids on the island of Mauritius, which is on the other side of Africa. Here are a series of other photos from the Canary Islands. On the other side of the alignment going through Africa, you come to the Maldives, a sovereign state in the Indian Ocean, situated in the Arabian Sea and southwest of Sri Lanka and India. It crosses over in the area of Malay, the capital city of this island country. Of particular interest to me in Malay is the nicely protected harbors on the island and the straight street alignment that bisects the island. This is a resort in the Maldives, also with a nicely protected harbor. The next island the alignment touches is West Timor, part of the Malay Archipelago at Kupang. 
The next island stop is New Caledonia. This island grouping is called a French collectivity. The alignment grows through the capital of Noumea, on the west side of the southern end of the big main island. Also in Noumea, we see the same nicely shaped protected harbors we saw in the Maldives. And as well, we see the massive stones on Noumea in these photos. From here, the alignment goes on to cross the Kermadec Islands. These islands are considered part of New Zealand and are 600 miles northeast of there. They are a nature and marine reserve, and the only human presence is a permanently manned station at Raoul Island. Photos of the Kermadec Islands are shown here. Next, the alignment goes through the South Sandwich Islands. This is interesting. Britain calls it an overseas territory, and it is also claimed by Argentina, not unlike the Falklands dispute. And the Falklands are also on a grid line. More images from the South Sandwich Islands. I just went through the islands of one of two sides of the global alignment emanating from the star tetrahedron of North America that passes through Cape Farewell, Greenland. Going in the other direction, after leaving Cape Farewell, we come to the obscure and interesting-looking Belcher Islands in the Hudson Bay. These abstract art-looking islands from the air sit directly on this alignment. It also appears that the Belcher Islands are in alignment with other important cities and places on the grid in North America. This alignment passes very close to Ottawa, Ontario, the capital of Canada, and a location which sits at the intersection of two sides of one of the tetrahedrons and it looks like it is tracking through Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, another location of significance. There are no islands on this alignment until after you leave North America and go into the Pacific Ocean, where the alignment passes over the volcanoes Kilauea and Mauna Loa on the big island of Hawaii. Kilauea is one of the world's most active volcanoes. And its neighbor, Mauna Loa, is the world's largest volcano and is active as well. I will note here that the layout of the Earth's grid system seems to correspond to locations of volcanoes, making me wonder if there is a relationship between the two. The next islands on this alignment in the Pacific Ocean are the Kiribati Islands. The Republic of Kiribati is a sovereign state in the Central Pacific Ocean. Kiribati is also the location of the International Date Line since 1995. Howland Island is in this general area, which is famous as the place where Amelia Earhart's plane is believed to have disappeared. In the Solomon Islands, the alignment runs through several of the islands, including Honiara, the capital. The Solomon Islands contain major battlefields from World War II, including Guadalcanal, which is also on another alignment. The form of government for the Solomon Islands is a constitutional monarchy, with the British monarch as its head of state. The last island I'm going to share with you on this particular alignment is Willis Island. It is the only permanently inhabited island in the Coral Sea Islands Territory, which is an external territory of Australia. There is a weather monitoring station there. It doesn't look like much, does it? It's directly on the alignment, so it must have some significance to the overall scheme of things. Now I'm going back to Merida, Mexico as a starting point and track the islands in alignment going in a southwesterly direction. We first come to the Galapagos Islands. The Galapagos Islands, which are part of Ecuador, were made famous by the studies of Charles Darwin, who was a naturalist and biologist on board the HMS Beagle on its famous world surveying tour back in the 1830s. While a small human population lives there, it is a national park. Next, the alignment crosses over Easter Island, which is a nodal point on the Earth's grid system. A nodal point is where numerous ley lines and planetary alignments connect. It is considered part of Chile, and its original name was Rapa Nui. Easter Island is most famous for its moai, or giant heads. More recent finds show that the famous gigantic heads of Easter Island are substantially much more than heads. This alignment crosses over the Antipodes Islands, which are considered part and lies to the south of New Zealand. There is no public access to these islands, and they are on the UNESCO World Heritage List. Antipodes means the opposite side of, and was thought for a long time to be the opposite side of London, though now said to be opposite of a location in France. The alignment crosses over the city of Invercargill, a city which sits at the southernmost tip of New Zealand. 
I see the same building architecture all over the earth with onion domes and the same style of building facade ornamentation. Next, the alignment comes to Stewart Island, the third largest island of New Zealand, lying south of the South Island with a small population. Then we come to the Snares Islands, a small island group south of New Zealand, which administers it, but they are not inhabited. These islands are also designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Next, Flinders Island is the largest island in the Furneaux Group. These islands lie northeast of and is a state of Tasmania. This same alignment continues on up through the middle of the continent of Australia, through Uluru, also known as Ayers Rock, another nodal point on the Earth's grid system. The alignment leaves Australia at Cape Tabot. Cape Tabot is also known for one of two horizontal waterfalls in the world. It then goes through Kupang, West Timor from here, which we already encountered on another alignment. Next, it passes through Flores Island, the 10th largest island of Indonesia. Flores Island is also known for the discovery of dwarf human skeletons in a cave there, which were subsequently named Homo floresiensis. It is also known for the discovery of large skeletons like giant rats and is another home for Komodo dragons. The current inhabitants of Flores are primarily Roman Catholic in a predominantly Muslim Indonesia. Then the alignment goes on to cross through Posu and the capital of central Sulawesi, Palu. Sulawesi is a province of Indonesia. There are over 400 granite megaliths on Sulawesi in the area of the Laura Lindu National Park, of which around 30 represent humanoid forms. While we are here, I am basing this next section on this picture from the Laura Lindu National Park in Sulawesi, and this is a good opportunity to bring in comparison photos of very similar animal relief carvings in other places, like on the Chalpas at Kutembo near Lake Titicaca in Peru, and at Gobekli Tepe near San Liorfa, Turkey. Not only are there similar animal relief carvings in these three places, in particular, note the identical placement of the hands on the belly on each of the humanoid statues, like this one at Laura Lindu National Park, this one at Easter Island, and this one at Gobekli Tepe. Leaving Sulawesi, the alignment goes into Malaysia and through Tawau, which is the capital of the Tawau district in Sabah, Malaysia. In 1898, the British set up a settlement there as part of the British North Borneo Chartered Company. In 1944, Tawa was bombed and razed to the ground. It was rebuilt after the war. It passes over the Balabek Strait, which connects the South China Sea with the Sulu Sea. The alignment then passes across Palawan, which is a province of the Philippines. Next, we come to the Spratly Islands in the South China Sea, which, like most of the places I'm telling you about in this video, I had never heard of before. Come to find out, the Spratly Islands are highly prized for some reason, hotly contested, and claimed by multiple countries, including China. I think there's some kind of energy component, whether placement, production, or something else, related to the Earth's grid lines. The next place the alignment crosses, traversing the length of this province of China, is the island of Hainan. This is Rongtong Village, a historic lava rock village on Hainan, near the city of Haiku. It is said to have been built 900 years ago and is largely uninhabited. I think it is an interesting place to make note of, given the stonework there. After leaving the island of Hainan, this alignment goes on into mainland China and goes through the Gobi Desert in Mongolia up through Siberia and leaves Siberia at the Lyakhovsky Islands. They are the southernmost group of islands in the New Siberian Islands in the Arctic Sea. This is a good place to put in comparison photos of Main Street in the United States, 
Creasy in Siberia and Guthrie in Oklahoma, because a picture I found of this Siberian town reminded me both of Main Street, USA, and this picture I had seen previously of the architecture in Guthrie. Next, the alignment enters into North America at Cape Bathurst in the Northwest Territories of Canada, and it travels through to Alberta and then connects with the northern apex of the Star Tetrahedron at Edmonton, Alberta, and the side emanates in a southwest direction once again, only further north. This side continues on through Alberta, including the Banff Lake Louise area, down through the Columbia River Gorge area in Washington State, and on down through Nevada, the Sierra Nevada Range, and Death Valley in California, and then back out into the Pacific after it passes through Los Angeles. From there, the alignment goes across the following islands. The Tuamotu Archipelago is the largest chain of atolls in the world and is formed of almost 80 islands and atolls. It also crosses the Society Islands, which includes Tahiti, the island of Maria, and the island of Bora Bora. And then the alignment crosses the uninhabited chromatic islands administered by New Zealand, which we also saw previously on a different alignment. Next, it crosses over Macaulay Island, which is considered part of the chromatic islands and is halfway between the North Island of New Zealand and Tonga. It crosses over Curtis Island, which is also considered part of the Chromatic Islands. Then it crosses over the northern tip of New Zealand, which is called Three Kings or North Cape. Earlier in this video, I showed where the southern alignment of this particular earth grid configuration crosses over the southern tip of New Zealand. It then enters Australia in the Sydney Wollongong area in New South Wales, where it travels through Australia for a bit before it exits at Lagrange. Then it heads to Surakarta, Indonesia which is close to Bora Bador, also mentioned previously. From there, it goes up through the Java Sea, crossing Belatung, an island on the east coast of Sumatra. The alignment crosses the city of Kota Baru, Malaysia. Then it crosses over the Natuna Islands, which are a group of 272 islands located between Malaysia and Borneo. Then the alignment goes up on into Southeast Asia, through Cambodia, Eastern Thailand, Central Laos, and on up into China and so on and so forth. I'm going to end this video on islands on the grid here. I wanted to share with you some of what I have found in my journey tracking cities and places in alignment with each other across the earth.